It's Friday, June 14. In the headlines, Jamaica's 10th Biennial Diaspora Conference starts this Sunday, June 16. A focus on fathers as we look towards celebrating Father's Day on June 16. In business news, the National Commercial Bank Financial Group has sold 32% of its holdings in Bermuda. Regionally, Barbados calls for continued capitalization of loss and damage fund. And in sports, Chris Gale named the captain of the West Indies champions. This is The Weekend News on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. This year's 10th Biennial Diaspora Conference will kick off this Sunday, June 16, at the Montego Bay Convention Center in St. James. State Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Alando Terrellong, says members in the diaspora and Jamaican businesses can expect to benefit from increased opportunities for trade and commerce at the conference. He says a big focus of this conference is recognizing that it's not a talk shop. It is literally an investment business forum with investment opportunities in a wide range of economic areas, including real estate and e-commerce. This year's conference will be held under the theme United for Jamaica's Transformation, Fostering Peace, Productivity and Youth Empowerment. The conference will host persons visiting from Africa, the United Kingdom, the wider Caribbean, North America, Canada, the Middle East, and Asia. It is set to end on June 19. 2,000 helmets were donated this week to the National Helmet Wearing Coalition for distribution to motorcyclists island-wide. Chairman of the JN Foundation, Paris A. Liu Ai, says the helmets will help to reduce the number of injuries and deaths resulting from motorcycle accidents. We have a comprehensive plan to distribute these helmets, focusing on un the underserved communities and groups to ensure wide accessibility. He says workshops will also be held to raise awareness about helmet safety. These workshops will emphasize the benefits of wearing certified helmets and helping to foster a culture of safety. Our initiatives are designed to ensure that everyone understands the importance of using high quality helmets for maximum protection. The helmets were donated by the Ministry of National Security. Speaking during the handover of the protective gears, Portfolio Minister Dr. Horace Chang said too many motorcyclists, especially young males, are being maimed from crashes. And then they take a chance to demonstrate that they have such skill and do all kinds of crazy things on a bike. Now, I don't mind them doing it. They can do it well and they are properly attired, helmet, and they require the accoutrements and the hands and, 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 the, and the limbs. But they do it sometimes with slippers only, and in shorts and jeans, which is putting themselves at risk, putting others at risk, and costing the state a whole lot of money. Because when they get into hospital, it's multi-billion dollars of treatment we have given them in time, skill, and effort. According to the National Road Safety Council, approximately 600 motorcyclists have been killed on Jamaica's roads since 2012, more than 90% of whom were not wearing helmets at the time of the crash. Applications are now open for the Heart NSTA Trust's Summer of Skills program. Jamaicans aged 15 and older who are interested in acquiring practical skills for employment or entrepreneurship or who are passionate about the creative arts and technical innovation are encouraged to apply. More from Danita Rodney. 
Addressing Wednesday's post-cabinet press briefing at Jamaica House, Managing Director Dr. Tanisha Ingleton at the Heart NST Trust said the Summer of Skills Initiative aims to strengthen Jamaica's technical and vocational education and training ecosystem. We are going to be providing training in high demand sectors as I spoke to earlier. There's welding, cabinet making, cosmetology, event coordination, cake baking minister and decorating, guest room services, tiling, and all of these align with market needs and trends. Dr. Ingleton mentioned that participating in the summer program provides an immeasurable benefit in terms of personal growth. And then of course there's the incalculable piece, the personal growth, that investment certainly it's not something that we can really calculate what is it that individuals get from being at the heart in SDA Trust. We will be able to foster confidence, teamwork and leadership skills through interactive workshops and collaborative projects with all of Jamaica right across the 14 parishes. She continued emphasizing that the Heart NSTA Trust is a crucial pillar of Jamaica's ecosystem development. I really want to anchor this because it is important for us to understand that the Heart NSTA Trust is one of the critical pillars in Jamaica's economic development and being that we must provide vocational lifelong learning and employability skills that pivot the economy towards productivity but not only towards productivity but also higher value added activities in critical sectors such as tourism construction agriculture manufacturing and engineering Training through the Summer Skills Program will be available in three-week blocks during July and August at Heart's 28 institutions across the island. Interested youth can register online at Heart's Summer Skills or at any Heart location island-wide. Danita Rodney for PBCJ News. Accept your children as the unique individuals they are. Love them without limits and don't forget discipline. Those are some of the thoughts of the fathers who experienced a spa day just for them on the grounds of the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport this week. Jamaicans will be celebrating dads this weekend. However, the Bureau of Gender Affairs got a head start. Take a look. notch in terms of providing that care to show fathers that while it did that they are providing care for their household for family and community they themselves need care so we decide to ensure that their physical emotional and mental well-being is being taken care of in our little way to show that appreciation so right now we're here at the ministry and we we have the awardees we have over 30 awardees along with the staff fathers who are um, staff members of the ministry uh, getting their pedicure, facial scrub, along with back massage. It is an amazing event. The truth is I think it addresses a social fracture that we have, that men don't need the time out, the break. This event shows us that men are actually valued and I'm leaving this empowered. Whatever work I was doing before, today will make me want to work harder because I feel appreciated. It's awesome because um, it's very unusual because most times as it is dubbed, Came for the fathers. We're the one taking care of all the things and other people. Nobody really recognizes or acknowledges that we have a responsibility. But now that it is, we are allowed the opportunity to be treated and to be, you know, recognized. And it's a good feeling. It is indeed a great event, and just to say big up uh, to the ministry for putting on such an event, so that fathers can feel good about themselves.
to protect, to provide. And if you are co-parenting, you still have that responsibility. It may not be the ideal situation for you, but never neglect your responsibility. But understand, as a man, you do need to take time out as this is doing for us and recharge and go again because your kids need you. No matter how hard it is, as a father, it's your responsibility and your obligation to take care of your kids, right? There are means out there that um, you can seek source for assistance, but on the whole, you should make it your thing, no matter what it is, to make that effort and meet the demand. But to love them, of course, with, with, with understanding, of course, in that love embed discipline as well, as I said before. And, 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 and in love, really and truly, everything, really, love really covers all still because in loving them, you have to be patient with them. I mean, sometimes as parents, as fathers, we're, we're quick to get angry at them and not understanding what is happening with them. But um, just to be patient with them and to hear them out as well. A lot of times we, 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 we rush them for certain indiscipline and not to hear their side of the story. So we have to, you know, deal with them in such that we hear from them side of the story. Give them a correction in words and not just wit. Um, of course, the, the hard discipline. Best thing about being a dad, hearing them say daddy. Going home looking for, for that, you know, expectation that, that they're on the veranda waiting to see me come in, you know, just to hear them say daddy and, and, and so forth. So, so, yeah, and also, you know, at times we. As times as parents, sometimes we, we neglect becoming a child again for them. And one of the things I always try to do, I, I get down on the ground at times, I, I, I drive the car with them at times, I roll with them on the ground at times, you know, just to get into that mood that, to let me know that, listen, even though I'm a father, I'm your father, I can still get down to let you feel that I understand where you're at, because I was once there, and to let you feel loved and appreciated as well. Wow, coming home from work. Yeah, and, being, and when the kids say, Daddy's here, and they run out to me, and I'm taking my son and my daughter, it's an awesome feeling, it's great. Time now for the business report with Denise Williams. Good day everyone and thank you for joining us on the Business Report. I'm Denise Williams, your guide through the latest happenings in the world of business. Michael Lee Chin led National Commercial Bank Financial Group, NCB FG, has sold 32% of its holdings in Bermuda-based financial house Clarion Group Limited to the parent company of Barita Investments, Cornerstone Group. In an announcement of the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange on Thursday, June 13, NCBFG noted that the following proposed divestment, the group will still retain 19.90% interest in Clarion. Robert Almeida, Group CEO, said further details would be provided concerning the transaction maintaining that NCBFG's reduced ownership interest in the Clarion Group will not have a material impact on the future earnings or the asset base of NCBFG after the completion of the sale. Regional Adventure Tours and Attractions Management Company, Chukka Caribbean, has expanded to the U.S. Virgin Islands, its sixth destination. The acquisition of cruise ship excursions will see Chukka offering catamaran tours around the island of St. Thomas as well as to and from its neighbor St. John. The company also provides on-land tour excursions. This strategic move marks Chukka's entrance to its sixth Caribbean destination, reinforcing its position as a pioneer in providing lifelong memories through embedded, authentic, adventurous experiences to tourists from around the globe, the company stated to our today. During trading for the period June 12, 
2024, the following companies represent the top three most active stocks that investors bought and sold on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Trans Jamaica Highway Limited with 6,773,088 units amounted to 28.01% of the market volume in terms of sales. Omni Industries Limited with 4,402,167 units amounting to 18.20% of the market volume in terms of sales. Carreras Limited with 2,007,550 units amounted to 8.3% of the market volume in terms of sales. Over on the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, trading on June 13, 2024, registered a volume of 57,851 shares, crossing the floor of the exchange valued at 951,617 Trinidad and Tobago dollars and 22 cents. JMMB Group Limited was the volume leader with 26,000. 270 shares, changing hands for a value of 33,122 Trinidad and Tobago dollars and 20 cents, followed by Massey Holdings Limited with a volume of 9,479 shares being traded for 38,653 Trinidad and Tobago dollars and 90 cents. Moving from the money moves of investors, executives, and companies, we turn to the Forex market. On June 13, 2024, the Bank of Jamaica reported that US $39.4 million was bought from Forex traders, while US $51.3 million was sold to Forex traders. Buying directly from the Bank of Jamaica, foreign currency traders sold the US dollar for $156.35 and bought the US dollar for $154.90. The difference between the buy and sell rate was $1.45, which represents a profit for Forex traders for every US dollar traded. Canadian Forex traders earned a trading profit of $0.74 cents from transactions with the Bank of Jamaica. The Canadian dollar was sold at $114.53 and bought for $113.79. For traders looking at the British pound, they pocketed a profit of $2.22, selling it for $199.23 and buying it for $195.40. For the credit report tip of the day, remember that a strong credit score unlocks your full financial potential. So if you're dreaming of starting your own business, a good credit score is essential for obtaining business loans and funding. It opens doors to entrepreneurship, allowing your innovative ideas to take flight. Remember, a high credit score ensures you're well prepared for emergencies and unexpected expenses, giving you the peace of mind to focus on your personal, and professional growth. And with that, we wrap up today's business report. I'm Denise Williams, appreciate your company. Stay well informed, stay ahead of the curve. Until our next update, take care. In regional news, Barbados' Prime Minister Mia Motley is pressing for the continued capitalization of the Loss and Damage Fund. That historic breakthrough was made at the UN Climate Change Conference, COP27, at the end of 2022 and approved at COP28 in Dubai. Ms. Motley's comments came in a video address at a Global Leaders Forum organized by UN Trade and Development, where she stated that Barbados, like all small islands developing states, has been dealt a difficult hand in dealing with inherent vulnerabilities. We do not want only to be able to pay and recover from the loss and damage that we had, but we want to avoid and avert loss and damage. Just over a week ago, we launched consultations on the Bridgetown Initiative 3.0 as we met in Antigua 
the Small Island Development States Forum, the fourth one. This is a call for decisive action to transform the rules around representation at the international financial institutions and to scale up significantly the funding that is available to each of us while at the same time shock-proofing our economies to be able to withstand these multiple crises that we are facing. For some, we have no control over such as our geography. But there are other issues confronting us that we can and that we must address. One such issue is access to appropriate financing. The financing gaps for sustainable development are growing exponentially. Estimates have illustrated that in at least an additional $3 trillion of investment, US dollars, is needed annually for developing countries. However, many developing countries lack access to affordable and adequate financing. Many lack the fiscal space. We therefore sometimes get the impression that small states are chided for our development aspirations. President of the Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association, Roger Roach, believes there needs to be a soft landing when dealing with trade of products from other CARICOM countries. Sunil Lala reports. Commenting on an issue in May relating to the trade in milk products between TNT and Guyana, President of the TNT Manufacturers Association, Roger Roach, said he believes more needs to be done to harmonize the standards and certain regulations across CARICOM. He said while standards must be adhered to, there needs to be effective communication and understanding by regulatory agencies to ensure this does not happen again in the future. We have to understand that the trade is balanced in our favor. In some cases, it's 80-20, where 80% of the trade into a CARICOM country is Trinidad products being exported to that country and only 20% or less is exported from that country into Trinidad and Tobago. So the point I was making is that the regulatory agencies in Trinidad and Tobago must be cognizant of that fact when treating with imports from other CARICOM countries into Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Roach noted similar circumstances in the past and the effect it has on the image of businesses from Trinidad and Tobago. One would recall that years ago, when there was an issue importing water from Jamaica or parties from Jamaica, the Jamaican business community called for a boycott of Trinidad and Tobago products, resulting in a sitting Prime Minister from Trinidad and Tobago having to go to Jamaica to resolve that issue. The same issue happened recently, right, where the Minister of Trade had to intervene with the business community in Guyana to help to resolve that issue. In a media release from the Ministry of Trade on May 15th, with the heading Government of Trinidad and Tobago committed to increase bilateral trade with Guyana, it noted that Trade Minister Paula Gupiskun did meet with representatives of the Guyana Private Sector Commission and senior representatives of the Damarara Distillers Limited, the company that was importing the milk into TNT. Mr. Roach said there was talk of a committee being established by CARICOM to lower non-tariff barriers between countries which would be beneficial for all those involved. Some time ago, when the heads of government met, they spoke about a committee that would be established among CARICOM, comprising of the leaders of, of different regulatory agencies to help to remove and to lower some of these non-tariff barriers that plague the CARICOM from trading with each other. And we look forward to see the establishment and the working of that committee. Mr. Roach said there is unity between countries to ensure such a problem does not exist, but believes more needs to be done to tackle the issue. Sonolala, TTT News. CARICOM signed a new Memorandum of Understanding on Thursday with the African Union as a continuation of efforts towards finalizing an Afri-Caribbean free trade agreement. The MOU was inked during the hosting of Afrixim Bank's 31st annual meeting in Nassau, Bahamas. While it gives renewed hope to attaining the goal, experts and policymakers believe it will take much more than agreements to make free trade between the two blocs a reality. The MOU was hailed by the African Union's Commissioner for Economic Development, Trade, Tourism, Industry and Materials, Ambassador Albert Muchenga. In 30 seconds, what action would you actually commit to do when we walk away from this conversation to make this reality? Secure buy-in from member states, from the private sector, from women, from the youth, from civil society, academia, and all the parties involved. Thank you.
I like that. In 30 seconds, that's good. Mr. President, walk away from this conversation. What is one action that you think we should undertake to make sure we make this a reality? In 30 seconds. Thank you. The story of integration in Africa is a story of practical enthusiasm against theoretical pessimism. Everybody who looks theoretically at integration among developing countries says you cannot export commodities among the countries. You have to industrialize. Since you have not industrialized, theoretically it's impossible. Practically, Africans are enthusiastic to integrate. And the solution lies somewhere in the middle. Right. Where Africa Bank is, is suggesting as a solution global Africa that will approach the world. And uh, that is consistent with a solution we had got 25 years ago, NEPAD, which is already on the table. That, so, so the solution is somewhere there. And I would suggest going slowly, not converting too many things at the same time, African free market, free trade areas, not yet moving to customs union right. until that is integrated, until that is settled to a, a little Excellent. extent. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. So, Pamela, over to you in 30 seconds. What we were prepared to do working away from this conversation? Uh, I'd say three things. Uh, yeah. One, the political will. Establish that. Sign off on a nice big thing. It always looks good, right? Mm. <laughs> Drill down to the specifics. That's the second. Get the specific chain. And then finally, make the youth feel it's worth it for them. Right. We have over 60% of our, of our populations under 35. If they don't buy it, there's no point. Right. In sports, Chris Gale has been named captain of the West Indies champions for the upcoming World Championship of Legends 2024. The competition, set to begin on July 3rd in Birmingham, UK, promises to be a memorable event for cricket fans around the globe. Chris Gale is an ambassador for the ongoing ICC T20 World Cup being staged in the West Indies and USA. Joining Gale in the World Championship of Legends team are cricket greats Dwayne Smith, Samuel Boudry, and Darren Sammy, making the West Indies champions a formidable force in the tournament. The World Championship of Legends, approved by the England and Wales Cricket Board, will feature six prestigious franchises. India champions, Australia champions, England champions, Pakistan champions, South Africa champions and West Indies champions. That's it for the news on PBCJ. You can follow us on our social media platforms at PBC Jamaica. Have a great weekend.